Oh, I think we can see your screen now. Perfect. Thank you. Excellent. Sorry for that. So I will be talking about, let's see, I must have the cursor right here. Talking about my best tricks about labeling and circles. Have to advance this. So now, finally, so I will talk about uh, circles with geographic extent, and it will be a server solution with WMS. Actually, it's a problem that I had one and a half year ago in a project. And then I will also talk briefly about new possibilities of labeling in Map Server 8. So my background is uh, that I'm a land surveyor from the beginning, and I'm also uh, also uh, have a PhD in cartography. I used to be a grass developer in the early years. Uh, actually, I went to the my first open source conference in 1989 in DC uh, with the grass. And I've done some other things as well here, but let's carry on. So all the examples I will be talking about here is on GitHub. And here you have the address. I will show that in the end as well. Uh, so what I want to do is uh, that I have a simple uh, comma separated file with IDs, easting, northing, distance of this, uh, actually radius of the circle and uh, two possible labels. And if you look in the documentation uh, and look at circles, you mostly end up in the style symbol circles. And that doesn't work very well when you are going to do circles with the geographic extent. Uh, I'm skipping those experiments. But then you end up, if you read carefully, that you end up with layer type circle. And that is one option. But this is more or less a evening experiment session that I had in the following experiments that I will show. So the layer type circle, uh, that's actually a circle defined, defined by the bounding rectangle of the circle uh, with two points. And the example that is shown is with inline features, uh, where you have the points here. here. Uh, so you have to repeat that in your map file each time. So I created an example. All these are uh, available. So I read the C CVS file, CSV file, and then I have an inline uh, uh, here file that prints the map files. You can see that in the examples on GitHub. So then I ended up with these inline circles, and that worked well. But it's a little cumbersome to write inline files like that. And but then I start to think, well, it's uh, actually what 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 the map server wants to have here is multipoint. So I I did a translation of the CVS file to well-known text with multipoints, and then I could write a VRT that maps the well-known text to multipoints. And then I actually converted it to shapefile. And as you see here, I'm reading shapefiles here because I don't have extension on it. And that's also showing up well. 
Uh, so, so uh, all these examples are uh, done with shape to IMG. And as you see here in the map file, I'm actually um, doing both. Uh, it's this kind of circles, they're kind of a polygon. Uh, and I do the outline on them. But there's other options. I said, I think it was Seth Gervin that showed this uh, a couple of years ago that you could do circular strings. Uh, and then you're not using the type circle, but type line. So I created a script that uh, did circular strings. And that looks like this. And that's actually a CSV. You connect it with OGR, and it's the CSV reader within OGR that reads uh, these uh, curves then. And that works well as well. And you can add, uh, if I extend these uh, circular strings with label text also, uh, and then I add a label in my map file, that works well as well. Uh, one thing that I found out here is that you could um, kind of um, determine where you want the circle to begin also when you do circular strings. So, for instance, here this circle, this uh, label is centered where I started at 12 o'clock, but I could start the circle anywhere. I could start it at nine o'clock or three o'clock or wherever. Uh, next option here is that I do a VRT file with spatial light SQL. And the uh, spatial light has a method that's called make circle. And it then computes a circle within the SQL. And that's very useful, I thought. So let's try that. So I have this v VRT that is describing the SQL that is uh, working towards the CSV file. And I then have type line here as well. And that works well. I could then add label one and two to the SQL statement when I'm reading the CSV file. And I add a text label, a little complicated text label maybe, but we will see. Yes, that works. Uh, I get all that information. I actually also added the radius from the distance uh, value. And we a uh, uh, good thing about writing these uh, VRTs is that you could add more layers within your VRT. So here I, I'm adding a point reading from the same CSV file. So I'm just reading the original east and north coordinates. And then I read, uh, have a map file that's reading it, and I do a point layer. And as you see here, that's the cross that's in the middle of each circle. And that gives me now the possibility, if I add a text label, I could add text also at the point. So that's pretty neat, I think. Uh, it gives you a lot of options how to treat this simple CSV file and label it in different ways. And finally then, when I do WMS services in map file, I usually test them first in open layers, and then I test them in QGIS and see that they're correct. And so here is it's overlaid on a one-to-one -one million map, raster map, and 
this my WMS service for, with the circles. Uh, if you have been around with Map Server for a while, you know that there is a JavaScript uh, feature creation function. But I ha it wouldn't surprise me if it would be possible to create circles there, there also. But this functionality is not com compiled by default. And I had some problems compiling it last, last time I tried. So um, well, um, that's uh, more experiments that some other person can do, or I do it some other time. So. My findings here is layer type circle requires creation of new data structure and no labeling possibilities. Uh, circular string also requires creation of new data structure, but labeling is possible on the line. Uh, and the, the thing I like the best here is possibly the VRT. Uh, with the SQL, that's my favorite method. Uh, you have direct access to your original data in the CSV file through the VRT. So it's much more flexible if you're going to add other data. And the labeling possibilities are greater. Uh, bonus feature with Spatialite SQL is that you can also create other spatial features like polygons, circular arcs, points, circle sectors, like pie charts. And actually we did that uh, in, a, uh, we, we did a project SmackM with, uh, that created Nautilus charts. It was five years ago. And um, this, um, we used uh, in the first version, we did the circle sectors for, for the lighthouses. We did it with this technique. So finally, I will talk a little more about upcoming features in Map Server 8.0, or maybe a little later, we will see. There's a pull request uh, that's called uh, work in progress, medial, medial axis approximation, geotransform. Uh, it's a very interesting initiative from Steve Lime, the father of Map Server from the beginning. Uh, and I'm keeping my fingers crossed that this will come into place. And I'm trying to do my best here. So uh, I actually carried out some initial tests myself on this pull request. So I uh, compiled uh, the master of uh, map server in a Docker container and tested out this new functionality a couple of months ago. And I think it turned out quite nicely. Uh, I know this functionality had been uh, done by uh, Ion in uh, Map Tools, Geo Tools uh, lately, and uh, Steve Lime. Actually, today he published a new version, a new pull request that he to told everyone to try this out now. And hopefully, if it turns out well, it will go into the 8.0 release. Otherwise, it will come in next release. But I, I'm really pleased. It, it, it has some problems. You see small lakes, uh, small islands. It would be good if the algorithm filtered those out. But um, I think it, it's very promising. I had another example with Norwegian text boxes. And it was perfect for that purpose. So. That's something really to look forward to in the next uh, 8.0 release. That will be able, uh, that will be done in hopefully a couple of weeks or within next month, I hope. So thank you for your attention, and here you have the the ex, uh, the, uh, the URL to the example code. And I actually uploaded the, the presentation there as well uh, in that GitHub.
Thank you, uh, Lars, uh, for a great presentation. Um, yeah. I saw that you, I saw that the, um, the link for the um, for the GitHub repository it's in the in the chat window. Um, I don't know if uh, someone wants to still uh, write a question, uh, ask a question. You, we still have time. You have a lot of uh, claps in the meantime. Okay, so so if there are no more questions, I think uh, we can. Maybe everyone is too tired in the end of the <laughs> day here, in Europe at least. <laughs> in Europe, yeah. Uh, it's been a long week. Uh, anyway, they, they have uh, your the address of your uh, GitHub repository, and uh, I think we will continue to, to monitor uh, the progress with, uh, with great attention. Um, let me thank you for, for this presentation and also uh, the, the three speakers that were here this afternoon, uh, we had an excellent session, um, and I think we can we can close here. Thank you, everyone, for attending as well. Uh, okay. Oh, there is a question. Okay. Uh, so the question is: How uh, is language support supported? How is language support for labels in Map Server? Uh, language is actually it, it works quite well. There is the international. You can set encodings to different languages. Actually, I've done map files for different countries in Asia, even, and it has worked really well. So, I, I, I've done. Uh, map files for different languages and it uh, has worked very well I, actually that was also part of having different language options in the inspire program so i think if you look at the documentation concerning inspire you can see how you can set up different uh, language options okay that's great thank yeah. you very much uh, I, I forgot to tell you also that this GitHub repository is mostly Bash scripts that produces then the it produces all, all the map files and it produces the data as well. So the only thing that should really be in that GitHub is the scripts and that first CSW file. Everything else is produced, but for your convenience. I've entered everything into the GitHub. OK, perfect. Excellent. I think we have time for a final question, if anyone wants to take the opportunity. OK. OK, so if there are no questions, so thank you very much, uh, Lars. And let me give you a virtual clap. And also thank you to the other speakers, uh, Matthew and Andrea, for an excellent uh, session. And I wish you a good afternoon or good evening. Um, and uh, it was a great first for you. Thank you. Thank you.